practice. So we do a lot of our yield grade practice from pictures. And this is a picture of a ribeye that sort of been cut at the 12th and 13th rib, um, which is the big muscle that goes down the back of the animal. Over here you can see the ribs of the carcass, and this is where the backbone would have been split. This the back of the, the skin over the back would have laid over this fat area right here. To calculate the yield grade, you need four measurements. First thing you need is the fat opposite the 12th rib, which would be this fat right here. You measure it about three quarters of the way up the ribeye. You need the size of the ribeye or the ribeye area. You need the carcass weight, the weight of the whole carcass. And then you also need the percentage of kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. Now carcass weight and K KPH percent are usually going to be given to you when you have a uh, just a picture of a ribeye, like what we're using to calculate uh, yield grade in this equation. The first measurement you need when you're calculating yield grade is the fat thickness at the 12th rib, which would be right here. You measure it about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way up the ribeye um, from the backbone. Now, you can measure it with a ruler in tenths of an inch and then you convert those tenths of an inch to a preliminary yield grade or a PYG. If you have no fat at all on the ribeye then you start out at a 2.0 PYG. If you have a four tenths of an inch of fat there at the ribeye then you're going to have a 3.0. If you have eight tenths of an inch of fat then you're going to have a 4.0. An easy way to remember that is to think 4 is 3 and 8 is 4. 4 is 3 and 8 is 4. It's easy to remember. When you're learning to calculate yield grades, you're usually given one of these grids like this. And if you look on the very edge of the grid, you'll find a ruler. And that ruler doesn't measure in tenths of an inch. It measures directly in PYG. You can see this beginning of the ruler starts out here at 2.0, goes up to 2.5, and then all the way up to a really fat carcass that would be a 6.5. So you place your little ruler on the edge of your grid here on your ribeye and measure the fat thickness. This one has just almost four tenths of an inch of fat, so it's almost a 3.0. It's just going to be a little bit less than that, and we're going to start it out at a 2.9. Now remember that that is your preliminary yield grade, or PYG, and it's going to be uh, the starting out place for your yield grade equation. So we're going to start this carcass out at a 2.9. To calculate the size of a ribeye, you need to use a grid like this. It's just a clear piece of plastic with this grid printed on it. When you're using the grid, you need to understand that each dot on the grid counts as one tenth of an inch. So if you count ten dots, that's one square inch. And you have to understand that you're counting dots, not squares. Now, the makers of the grid gave you kind of a little cheat sheet when they were making the grid. If you'll notice these dark lines right here, where it says 8, within that square, there's 80 dots. So you already know that that's 8 square inches. And in this little funny-shaped area down here, there's 10 squares, so that's another inch. And then up here, there's 20 squares, so that's another 2 inches. So... When you are measuring your ribeye, you can put the grid on the ribeye where as much of the ribeye area is in those already counted area dots as can be as you can fit in there so that you don't have to count as many dots. So here as you can see I've already fit the 8 inch square and then this little 1 inch square and then this little 2 inch area already in there. So that's 110 dots that I don't have to count. So then I just count the ones on the outside. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You might count that one out and say 9. So I've got 80, 90, and then 110 dots plus the 9 that I counted. So that's 119 dots. So this is an 11.9 square inch ribeye. 
After you measure the ribeye area and get the actual ribeye area, in this case the, this one's ribeye area was an 11.9, then you need to know how big the carcass was. A bigger carcass requires a larger ribeye. Again, if you look at the edge of your little grid, it will give you the weights and required ribeye areas for uh, those different weights of different carcasses. You can see there in the middle, a 600 pound carcass requires an 11.0, a 700 pound carcass requires a 12.2, 800, 13.4, and so on and so forth. So we're going to say that this carcass weighs 625 pounds. A 625 pound carcass requires an 11.3 ribeye. That's what it requires. Now we said that it has an 11.9 ribeye, which means it has a larger ribeye area than what it's required, and that's good. So that's going to drive the yield grade equation down, more like a 1.0. The equation that we're going to use is going to take the required ribeye area minus the actual ribeye area times 0 0.3. So in this carcass's case, we're going to have the required ribeye area of an 11.3 minus the actual ribeye area of an 11.9. The difference between those two is a 0 0.6, and that's negative. We multiply that times 0.3, and we come up with a negative 0.18. And we're going to adjust our preliminary yield grade down 0.18 from 2.9 for our larger ribeye. We remember that we always adjust Larger ribeyes down because down is more like a 1.0, more like those running back carcasses, and up is more like a 5.9. The percentage kidney, pelvic, and heart fat is calculated by the percentage of the fat that's located in the kidney, pelvic area, and heart area of the carcass. It'll range anywhere from about a 1.5 to as high as a 4.0. That would be a really fat carcass. Um, in this carcass's situation, we're just going to say that it has a kidney, pelvic, and heart, or KPH percentage of a 2.0. When we have our KPH percent, we just apply it to this graph, where a 3.5 is no adjustment, a 3.0 is a minus 0.1, a 2.5 is a minus 0.2, a 2.0 is a minus 0.3. So we said that this carcass is a 2.0 it has a minus 0.3 adjustment for its KPH, and we're going to subtract that from the preliminary yield grade. Okay, so once we put it all together, we had a preliminary yield grade of a 2.9. We're subtracting 0.18 for the ribeye area adjustment, and then we subtract 0 0.3 for the KPH adjustment. You add all those together, and that comes up with a 2.42 or a final yield grade of a 2.4.